Hey everybody, Nerd Transformer here again, and today I'm going to be reviewing something from my childhood, the Power Rangers Wild Force Deluxe Megazord Animus. Now, Animus is a heavy repaint slash remold of the uh, Deluxe Megazord, the regular Deluxe Megazord from Wild Force, but I don't have that one. Animus is the only one I have from that series, and I think he's pretty cool. Uh, in the show, Animus was like a god, let's see, in the Japanese version Gal Ranger, he was like a god or something, I believe. In the Wild Force show, the only thing I seem to remember of him is that he came from like another dimension to help the Silver, Rain the Silver Wolf Ranger fight some monster of the week. I don't remember much else, I just remember really liking this as a kid. I don't know, basically, I mostly stuck to Transformers, but it's basically anything that was like robotic and combined and stuff it was all I was also into, like Zoids also got my attention. Power Ranger Megazord's got my attention, um... Yeah, that's basically it. Those are all the big robot stuff I can think of. Maybe some Ninja Turtle stuff. Starting with the, uh, Lion here. Now, if you want to know the original Tower scheme, um, I do have these Legend set of the Gal Ranger Megazord. And you can see the Lion originally was red with gold mane and green eyes and such. Well, this version is like a bronze mane with uh, black fur, red eyes, silver teeth, a little bit of gold accents, and bronze tail back here too. Also, please try to. I hope you don't mind the paint scrapes. This is like a twenty. This is like a fifteen-year-old set or something. This survived my childhood fairly well. But yeah, here's the lion. He looks pretty cool. I always kind of pretend he was like the Liger Zero from Zoids when I was a kid. So he was probably one of my favorite toys. And like I said, with the Legends 1, you can see the color differences from what the original set would have had. Uh, he's a pretty cool little toy, though. He's got a lot going on. He does have a lot of articulation, since they are animals. His mouth does is on a hinge. His arm is on a hinge. It's also a hinged elbow and even an ankle. A lot more than we get from Bandai today. You also get the same thing with the back hip. Hip going back, a lot more clickety. Can't go forward, though. You get a knee and you get ankle, so. And even the tail's on a small hinge. So, yeah, you can get a lot of cool stuff going for him. You can even get, you can see the mouth also and paint on the inside with the teeth. Yeah, we don't get that kind of stuff from Bandai today. We get really little paint and very, like, and these are also really heavy. Like, for, like, for American versions, these are full of metal, like, heavy. Like, toss this at your little sister, it's gonna cause her skull to break open. Next we have the Saw Shark, as I'm calling it. The original sh original shark was blue with silver head and a little bit gold for the fins. This one went for a completely different color scheme, and there's a heavy re one of our first heavy remolds. He gets this uh, saw nose at the front. Kind of give him make it like a saw shark, I guess. And you can see it's very long and it's really cool looking actually. He looks like he messed something up. I mean, considering this is supposed to be one of the good guys. And you see there's a lot of nice paint. Once again, there is not as much metal as in there, but there is a metal right here. And I think there's a little bit inside. I know the wheel here is metal too. Not the wheel, but the thing holding the wheel. And he's just pretty cool looking. Just a lot of nice details. That's what I missed about Wild Force. We had a lot of cool details and a lot of cool combinations. As far as articulations go, uh, we do get a swivel here, as well as a little bit of a bend, since he does form the elbow. And his fins can move. Oh, his mouth can open too. But it also reveals the thing that's used to hold the weapon later. But he's pretty cool. He do get some articulation. I mean, has a very awesome look. I mean, you can uh, bend this, but that just forms a weapon later. But he's pretty cool looking. Next is the bull, and he does have another thing kind of broken on him. Uh, his horn is loose. So, and yeah, all that's just glue of me trying to get it to stay back on, but. Not quite successful in that. Gonna try just to use something to get some friction hold on that again. And he's very nice look. He's very, he's also really heavy because I mean, there's metal inside of his legs. There's metal inside of all of this. Like I open up his shell of the back and see all that right there is metal. So he's very heavy. And as far as the original color scheme goes, he's originally black with some silver and gold horns. The horns are a bit more beige here. He's got like gold legs with uh, the red still in the front. And now he also has brown with like this gold lining. I love all this ancient, it gives him like a very ancient tech look almost. I love how it looks. And you got some silver on the bottom for the robot mode. As far as articulation goes, his uh, mouth does open, but there we go. His mouth does open. His head is on a hinge and his horns do rotate. 
Let me show you a non-broken one. And each of his legs are technically on a hinge. That's more for the transformation. But he's pretty cool. Next is the bird, or the phoenix, I believe. I'm not sure which one they call him. And this is a very nice little one. You can see immediately his feet are metal. And yeah, he has the head attached to his butt, which for some reason you can remove the horns from the head, but that kind of makes it, for me, it makes it look even more like a head to me. Because this with the trail, with the horns, all that kind of looks like a bird tail. Or, yeah, bird tail. I guess this might work a bit better, but yeah, I, I usually prefer just keeping the horns attached. They do slide off though, and they also are pegged onto this piece as well if you want to unpeg them. So, there's that. Oh yeah, and the horns are rubber, so no worry about poking them out. Cool thing though, is you look at from the bottom, the he the face is actually the face is only on this side when you flip the head around. So that is a pretty nice little feature to kind of actually hide the face, even though the head's just sitting there. Oh yeah, the little joints that the wings are sitting on are made of metal as well. First articulation, he has a lot. Um, he has a hinge at the head. No, his beak does not open. Got a narrow hinge at the neck. Feet are on hinges, but not ball joints. They do swivel, and they do have a hinge to close up, so you can get like an in-flight pose, or you can have them hanging from something. The wings are pretty nice because they do swivel around. They have a hinge up and down. They also have a, a swivel hinge going forward and back, so you can kind of get like roosting or such, or you can also get it like full splayed out. There's a lot of things you can do with the wings. It's really cool. I really like the clicks on them. They're really nice, cool clicks. Oh yeah, and technically the tail's articulated, but that's just the head rotating up and down from transformation. And as far as the original color scheme goes, there's a lot of remolding. Uh, the head's really different. It's normally like an eagle head, while well, this is like more like an ancient Egyptian head. And you can see a lot of nice paint too going through it. Really nice looking. The original is kind of gold with some silver accents, as you can see here with the Legends version. And finally, the tiger, or here it's more like a jaguar due to the stripes, I guess, or maybe a cheetah. With the colors. Uh, you can see some nice pink eyes, black little black stripes and whiskers going along the back and the sides and the head. Gives it a pretty nice look. Also little golden feet. All those feet in the joint, the golden piece there on the joint, those are all metal. So are these two big chunks here that help forward the ar arm later. And it feels like there's some metal inside of it too, so it's pretty nice. I miss this kind of stuff from Bandai. The original was uh, white with pink stripes and some black as well, as you can see from the Legends version here. And there's no real remolding with this one, I don't believe. Uh, all the others have had remoldings, like the uh, bull had the horns changed, the Sawtooth got this uh, sword. But the lion and the tiger didn't really get any changes for some reason. Not sure why. Maybe they just didn't need to. Articulation, its mouth does open and close, although it looks kind of derpy with the mouth closed so far, so you kind of just can't really close itself completely. Head does rotate and it is on this little hinge so it can look up and down which is pretty cool. Legs do go outward slightly and they go forward that far and sit that far back. You get a knee that goes forward and back and you do get a foot hinge that's so good it can flip around and make it look like a broke its angle. Back leg is about the same. Uh, it can go a bit further back but can't go forward at all. Um, it's got a hinge going back like this. It looks like it's double hinged, but it's not. It doesn't really do anything. It just folds up for the robot mode. And you do get foot hinge that goes crazy. And you also get this hinge in the middle because it forms an arm layer for the elbow, but you can use it if you wish. It does look could work, and you got the tail and the hinge too. These tails are also made of rubber, and they do stick off in weird directions from just being old. So there is all that. There's a lot going on with these figures that are pretty nice. There is like this train mode. If you split the bull open, go ahead and fold those hinges away. Let me get these guys out of the way. Then come underneath, fold all the legs forward. You can see these wheels pop up. Oh, and his horn fell off. I'll get that in a moment. Then raise it up on his tracks, and you can see it starts flipping out. And you fold this forward. Then you can flip these wheels out too. And you have this like transportation mode. I guess you could say this is like a mode like because you can fit all the uh, figures on here. You can put the lion there, you can put the tiger here, put the shark over here. Oh, his tail just popped apart. Yeah, figure's kind of old, a little bit broken. No one like reviewing broken figures, but I'm not likely to ever get a replacement one, so. 
and you can put the bird in the middle. And you can see you, can, you can't get them all in like one track and you could also go ahead and start combining them like this. I'm not going to do that. There's probably some other alternate modes to this, but I really don't care enough. There's also a couple accessories I'm missing. Like, there's a thing that the tiger could hold in its mouth, like a blade weapon kind of thing, but it's really not that important. Oh, and they all fall off. So anyway, let's get to the actual Megazord mode. Oh, and his horn popped off again. We're going to start with this train mode here. Basically, you just want to make sure you fold these wheels away again. And you're going to flip this back in, but only the black part. You want the gold part sticking up like this. Take these, fold them back up to form the feet. These are actually supposed to be laying down like this. Come to the back, make sure you split it. Then bring the back of the bull parts in. And you can hear them click. Then you come up here, and this actually rotates on a diagonal. Oh, if it will let me rotate. Right. Old toy. There we go. You see it rotates so it gives it a flat part on top of the bull head forward to form the legs. Kind of bring that down, kind of give it like a Texas belt buckle. Then you're going to take the lion. The lion's legs will just kind of collapse in like so. The other, the back legs, oh you might have to do the back legs first. The back legs will flip around and collapse the feet in. Flip around, collapse the feet in. Go ahead and get these bolts out of the way for the arms. And once those collapse in, then you can have the front legs come in, compacting them quite a bit. And just fold the tail down just to get it out of the way. And there's two clips on the bottom, there's two clips on the top of the bowl here. And they just kind of snag right on. And that forms the chest of the robot. Then take the shark here. I wish I had more room for this, but... Go ahead and extend it at the elbow. Oh, yeah, go ahead and take the tail off. The tail just comes, uh, doesn't supposed to come apart like that, but you can see like that just slides right out with a handle. Go ahead and extend the middle for the elbow. You want the gold forward or the shark head to the side like this, and go ahead and fold up the landing the wheel and fold the fins in. And just attach it to the bolt there. Uh, Tiger will do something similar. Take the head and you're going to want to push it in so it's not sitting there like flopping around. Turn it like that because it's going to form its left arm. The feet, you're going to just take it, flip them inward like so. And when you get it there, you're going to, want to push the leg in and it clicks in place. Same with this side. Flip the paw in, flip the leg in, put it all in there, click shut. Take the same with the top here, just kind of flipping the legs inward. And these legs will actually rotate all the way around to bring the gold to the front. And these two are actually on slides, so you can slide them together, but they don't peg there, just kind of slide together. And then fold the tail away and attach to the other side. Finally, we're going to take the bird here. Now, there's two ways to do the bird. I'm going to show you the official combination you're supposed to do first. Go ahead and take this, push it on in. This whole, his whole top of his mane here will collapse in. That's where the bird will go. Take the bird. Push the tail up to form the head. Bring the feet to the have the feet stick out the back where the tail was. You're gonna want the wings facing forward like so. And then these little uh, circles here fit into these slots where the arms are. So you just take the legs, line it up. You can see it just kind of slides right in. You're gonna want the wings kind of like so over the shoulders. The head does kind of lay against the lion head. Finally, you're going to take the uh, helmet or the tail and turn it around to reveal the face. And he's got a very cool, and there you have Animus's Megazord mode with a very cool ancient Egyptian look. Okay, Animus in his Megazord mode. You, let's go get the size comparisons out of the way. We have Generations Deluxe Warpath here. You can see he's about the size of, about double, twice the height of two Transformer Deluxes. And here he is next to that Legends Gal King I showed earlier. It was about two thirds of its size. And it's also good just having here for the kind of color comparisons, molding differences. As you can see, Gal King has more of like a five way crown, as well as all like the straight bulls and horns on that. Well, Animus has this rather Egyptian looking pharaoh type helmet, especially if we remove this. Very much of an ancient 
Egyptian look to them. But of course, I like leave the horns on. I just kind of like how those look. If I can get them to slide back on. There we go. Oh, and yeah, like I said, bull's horn is broken, so it's just going to fall off when it feels like. Uh, another, so you can see uh, Gal King, or the original Wild Force Megazord, has a very colorful, very kid appeal look. While Animus has more of a subdued, ancient, like almost like an ancient machine look to it. It's very cool looking, especially with the colors. Very much, like, very much makes you think of Egypt or some kind of ancient Aztec society. You might also notice Gao King, or Re regular Wild Force, has the wings kind of collapsed in. And since he is a remold, he can still do that. What the original has, the wings can actually fold in around the main and give him a complete looking chest, which I do like. It puts some color in the middle of the chest. And I think this actually looks a bit better, quite honestly. Instead of just having the wings stick off to the side like that. But it does, the wings also, off the side, also do give him a very godlike appearance, I guess. And I think they just wanted to make him a bit more different from Animus. Plus, you get some more of that gold in there. Usually, I just play him with the wings collapsed in, but I do I do kind of like this look. Kind of depends on how I'm feeling. And it does, and it does allow the horns to fold up a bit further, so you can do that. Pretty cool look. I just want to show the differences, see how... And this is how he's officially displayed. This is how he showed up in the show. He does have the wings kind of splayed outward, but they do get in the way of some articulation. But for just to get the official thing, that's how he looks. Articulation-wise for him, it is a Megazord, so he does not have much. A uh, head, you could technically say rotates, but the head, the face isn't coming with it, so... Uh, shoulders do go forward and back. Uh, really nice. Oh, you gotta be careful because it can cause the thing to come undone. As well as due to transformation, you can get the arm going back a bit for like a wind-up punch, I guess. And he does have elbows. That's an amazing thing for a Megazord to have elbows. And also a wrist swivel. And even hand articulation since you can technically move the mouth and such. Um, sharks on the other side is basically the same thing. Let's go ahead and get the wing up out of the way to show you. And bullhorn's gonna fall off forward and back, but it does not have that separation problem that the tiger does. You do get it going back a bit again. You also have a bit more of an elbow. Very nice clicking elbow. I love the ratching on these things. It goes swivels around and the mouth also does open. And you can flip this out, this little black piece. And that's for the uh, shark tail which does have a hinge going back to form a sword. A scabbard of sorts. And you can see it actually lines up inside of that with the kind of shape it has gonna have him holding the sword. Don't particularly care how it looks like this, just because it's sticking out a little too far. That's the only way we can peg in. Personally, I prefer just letting the, sh the saw shark keep using the blade that's kind of already on the end of it. And either attaching it back to the top of the shark or having the cat hold it. And while it is holding it the wrong direction, it holds it a bit better and looks a bit better in its hand, actually. I can just get just right. There we go. You see, now you can have him like dual wielding against his wet against his enemies. And the legs have no articulation really. You could kind of start breaking the transformation and have him do a knee, but his leg can't move at all. But he does have his legs separate automatically, and they're built in there, uh, molded to have his legs separated. So that's pretty nice. I'm just gonna put the shark tail back on top onto the shark. So yeah, that's Wild Force Animus. Uh, this is one of the Power Ranger figures I love the most because I not only did I grow up with it, but I mean you can hear all these really nice joints. He has a lot of nice ratchets. And I love it. He just holds poses so well when you do send it. Like for such a big guy, he holds poses really well. And he just has so much metal. This is like back when Power Rangers were at the top of the league. All the nice paint, all the nice metal, just very heavy, very I mean, he survived in my childhood, and you've seen how some of my Transformers came after I was a kid. It, they did not survive too well. A lot of them broke. But he just held up really well over the years, and I miss this age. I probably should get more of the Wild Force figures, because they're all supposed to be really nice. Like this, really good joints, really good metal all in them. Proper use of metal. He's not going to have any balancing issues. I mean, look how sturdy that is. Take a modern Power Ranger figure, Pat Megazord, and do that. You'll see pieces flying off all over the place, but him... I mean, the only pieces that are falling off are ones that are broken. And that, again, that's because I was a kid and didn't take care of my toys too much. 
only thing that falls off of mine are the shark tail and the horn. And again, that's my own fault for breaking the dang thing. So, if, if you're a Power Ranger collector and you just really want a very well-made robot, I would recommend the Wild Force series. Animus in here is pretty good, but I do... If you want something more colorful, you can get the original version, who's a lot more of what you expect with Power Rangers with the red, blue, black, pink, and yellow. And he just looks really cool because you see all that detail on his helmet, the blue crystal with the red paint and yellow line work, just all very nice. It all looks really cool, and I'm really glad I still have him. Because a lot of the new Power Rangers stuff I really can't get to, not even the Japanese version, because they're still kind of cheaply made and hollow and no metal. So, I really do miss this age of when we got even the American version. It's got really cool stuff. And the Japanese version is even better. It's got even more paint. It's got about the same amount of metal, but even more. The Japanese versions do have more paint. I do, wish, I do think the Japanese version actually painted these over. So, yeah, I do recommend Wild Force if you're into very well built robots or you enjoy Power Rangers. Definitely, if you enjoy Power Rangers, you should get into the Wild Force series. Or a uh, Gal Ranger if you want the Japanese version. So this has been Nerdy Transformed. I hope you enjoyed this look at my childhood, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.